my name is David and um, I'm going to be looking at Genesis chapter 37 verses 1 to 11 today in this devotion. The title is Not Any Dream Will Do. In Genesis chapter 37 verses 1 to 11 we are told about Joseph for the first time, the son of Jacob or Israel as he was renamed by God. Moses starts to paint a picture of the man as revealed to him by God, a man who becomes part of one of the most familiar sections in the Old Testament, even the whole Bible, even to those who have not yet discovered who Jesus is yet. We learn in those first few verses that he is still young, at 17 years old, but he has responsibility. A shepherd with his brothers looking after the flock, he was able to give a report to his father about how they were behaving, and even a report on their bad, bad behaviour at that. He was his father's favourite and most loved son, the first son of Israel's favourite and most loved wife, Rachel, of the four that he had. The phrase used in verse 3, because he was the son of his old age, can suggest to us that Joseph was an unexpected blessing. In Hebrew, the phrase can also mean wise one who possesses observation and wisdom above his or her years. So Moses is telling us, that there was something different about Joseph compared to his brothers. Israel compounded his feelings for Joseph by giving him a coat of many colours that was a sign in those times that he was set apart and would get the birthright. One could come to the opinion that Israel was not strong on promoting family unity and harmony. The brothers could not fail to see what was happening and hated him for it. Just how far they hated him is revealed in verse 4 where it says that they would not speak to him on friendly terms. It was considered a sacred duty at the time to offer peace to someone when you greeted them. It would have been obvious to all, including Joseph, how much they hated him. On the face of it, we have a picture of a very dysfunctional family with an arrogant, spoilt, self-seeking and tactless Joseph, a glimpse of some future soap opera. How can God work here to fulfil his purposes? And does the story of Joseph show us anything about God's plan? Well, yes, he does, and it does. We begin to see similarities to the life of Jesus later. Both Jesus and Joseph were beloved sons and suffered rejection. However, Joseph was not Jesus and could not deliver God's ultimate plan. As the story of Joseph unravels, we begin to glimpse God's plan to save his people. A dream is a very common way. For God to speak to us in the Bible and he gave Joseph two significant and clear dreams about what was to happen. First dream had his brother's sheaves bowing down to his sheep. Often dreams need interpretation but this would have been very clear to his brothers. Sometimes God gives us a dream and it's not meant to be shared. Given the state of his family life Joseph must have felt strongly that he should share it. His motive nevertheless was to find out what it meant for him it clearly points to his future ultimate position of status and to the future connection to food and grain. For his brothers, it just added to their hatred for him. The connection to food and grain has significance later, but reinforced the position of status. The question, are you actually going to reign over us, or are you really going to reign over us, is foretelling when the Jesus, Jewish people would uh, reject Jesus when he did not conform to their Messiah. The second dream, with the eleven stars and sun and moon bowing down to Joseph, reinforced the first dream, but specifically set him above his father and mother as well as his brothers. It is no surprise that the brothers' hatred of Joseph grew, and his father rebuked him. There was an understanding in those times that a repeated dream in meaning a huge significance and would be listened to and its fulfilment considered certain. In verse 11 this appears to have escaped his brothers but Israel did not miss it. The verse says his brothers were jealous of him but his father kept the saying in mind. As more of the story of Joseph is revealed later in the chapter and further chapters we will see that God had a plan for Joseph and God's people. God is the possible out of the seemingly impossible. At the moment, the story seems to be heading for disaster, but God is constant. His promises to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob will be fulfilled. 
And in the story of Joseph, we see how God can turn all things round so that they achieve his purposes. God knew Joseph's real heart, and even though Joseph was not perfect, God could use him in his great and mighty plans.